Welcome to our lecture online. We're still in the conquest of understanding what space is, the region between planets and stars and galaxies where there's nothing except maybe the odd atom floating around here and there at a density of perhaps one per cubic centimeter, which is essentially almost nothing. But space itself appears to have properties as well, and we're trying to understand those properties by observing certain things and trying to make sense out of them. And one of those things that we observe is that light actually changes direction in space. Now that's very odd because we know that light always travels in a straight path, so why would light bend and change direction? Well, it does so when it passes by a large object. Now, in 1919, Einstein proved that this actually was true. They did an experiment during a total solar eclipse where they took pictures before the eclipse, about six months earlier, and took pictures of the star's actual positions, and then they took a picture six months later when the Earth was on the other side of the Sun, but at that moment, for a few minutes, the Moon blocked the light to a particular point on the Earth. It had traveled to that location when there was going to be a, a total solar eclipse, and because the light bends around the Sun, it then appeared to be coming from a different direction. And so the picture that they took of the stars actually put the star, which was over here, the actual position six months earlier, it made it look like it was in a different position and the picture then proved that was the case. And Einstein even predicted how much the difference in position would be on the picture. Absolutely amazing. How did he know that? How did he know how much light would bend? Well, he assumed that light was affected by gravity just like any other object is affected by gravity. Now, that seemed rather impossible because several centuries before, Newton had discovered the equation of gravity where he concluded that the force between it, any two objects was equal to the product of the masses of the two objects. So therefore, you cannot have gravity if one of the objects doesn't have mass. There should not be a force. And since light does not have mass, the conclusion was that Einstein was completely wrong. There was no way that light could be affected by gravity. But then again, what is gravity? Well, Einstein believed that gravity was a warping of space around any object, especially an object as big as the sun, and so any light that would travel through that region would be affected by that warp and therefore change direction. He imagined that if a rock were to travel at the very same speed, the speed of light, which of course is impossible, objects can't travel that fast, but if they could, the rock would do exactly the same as the beam of light. The amount of deflection because of the force of gravity on the rock would be exactly the same as the deflection because of the force of gravity on the light. So the force of gravity couldn't be because of some magical force, it could also only be because something changes in space by placing an object like the Sun in it. Something around the Sun causes space to change so that light will then travel in a different direction as it goes through it, just like a rock will travel in a different direction as it goes through it. And we know that it's simply not this magical force of gravity. Gravity is caused by the warping of space around an object. And so that, again, gives us another look at space, realizing that space does something when you place an object that has mass within it, which then affects any other object, including light, which doesn't have mass, to travel when it travels through it, to bend and to be affected by that change in space when you put an object in it. So one plausible explanation, that's what Einstein came up with, was that space was warped in another fourth dimension, something we couldn't visualize, but it caused the light, just like as a rock, just like any object, would be affected by that apparent gravity, the gravity caused by the warping of space. So again, that gives us another look at something magical called space that has all kinds of properties that we're trying to unravel so we can really explain and try to understand what space actually is.